I am always tickled when Fox News talks about the birth rate decline and childlessness and all that good stuff. So this is from Fox News. And when I say news, I mean that very loosely. I mean it very loosely. I do not believe that they inform anything. But let's get into this article. America's major cities are increasingly childless due to skyrocketing cost of living. Huh. They said something that makes sense. America's major cities are increasingly childless, an ongoing trend that was only exacerbated by the emergence of the remote work during COVID-19 pandemic in 2020. In addition, spiking crime rates, increased costs of living, and rising housing prices are, have pushed families out of the U.S. metro areas, according to Manhattan Institute fellow Robert Verbrungen, who conducted a report that measured the family friendliness of America's cities based on the data of 200 metro areas. Burr Brogan's research looked at which metro areas have the most children, where families with children choose to move, and how metro areas fared based on measures of well-being, such as educational achievement, social mobility, social capital, and child poverty. His research concluded that urban living can be made more appealing to families um, through increased educational choice and decreased cost of living. Okay. That makes sense so far, so far. A pandemic, a crime wave, and a growing ability of knowledge workers to do their jobs without living in urban centers have only continued the decline of children's presence in cities, especially um, dense inner cores. Okay, so we're still making sense. America's major cities are increasingly childless, an ongoing trend that was only exacerbated by the emergence of the data tool, which allows readers to see how each of the 35 variables he measured correlate with all the others, found that cost of living emerged as the overwhelming reason why certain metro areas attract more family migration. His findings also show an abundance of children in the middle of the country with noticeable stretches of child-starved regions on the coast. As people become richer, Families especially want more space, so they tend to go places where they can get more space and tend to leave more and more dense inner city areas. Another dynamic is that come out, another dynamic that's come out since the pandemic has been that the rise of remote work, essentially if you have the ability to work from anywhere, those forces that were pushing people into cities kind of weakened a bit. I am surprised that they are actually spitting some, some data. It's crazy. A lot of people move to cities because that's where the jobs are. Cities have these really huge economic centers where all the, this economic activity takes place. And if you can take part in that remotely without living there, that gives you other options. I think that really accelerated the trend towards having fewer, and fewer or fewer kids in dense cities. Burbruggen, um, explained that if someone enjoys living in a big city, values their single life, and feels like they have to leave the city because it's either too expensive or because the environment is not suitable for kids, it forces people to make a difficult decision. My own sort of life journey took me from the suburbs into some really dense areas, he explained. I lived in New York City for a while, and then soon as we decided to have kids here, we were out of there. I think having cities that are inhospitable to family life, having cities that are really expensive when they don't need to be anywhere near that expensive because of the zoning laws, I think that forces a lot of people to make really difficult decisions over where they live and whether they can have kids while they're there. He also highlighted education, specifically school choice, as an important aspect of life that allows people to live where they want while also sending their kids to school somewhere they find acceptable. If family size housing is expensive in big cities, so is private school. Those wanting good public schools must pay for those too because property values reflect the right to send kids to schools that property is zoned to. School closures during the pandemic increased many parents' sense of frustration and powerlessness over the workings of the schools to which they had been assigned. Verbruggen said one consistent through line he found in his research based on the data of different variables was the high cost of living, which served as a huge driver of childless cities. He admitted that urban areas are likely always going to have a higher cost of living when compared to rural areas, but he doesn't believe the cost of living should be as high as it currently is. They have these district zoning laws and a lot of resistance to changing them to allow more people to live there. I think if you have to bring down the cost of living in cities, 
you can bring more families in in there because they'll actually be able to afford to live there. Another factor is the spiking crime across the metro areas, especially since 2020, which has had a big impact on people's decision to move out of cities. If you live in a suburb, you can live somewhere that's safe and you can drive your car to other places that are safe. Whereas if you're living in a dense urban environment, any kind of crime that happens is just far more present to you because it's harder to avoid places where crime is happening. So controlling disorder is important. You know what? Everything that he, this person has said, Verb Bruggen, has been on point. I have no complaints. I have no dissension. You guys go ahead and let me know what you think about this one. Like, comment, share.